Hey guys, thanks for joining us. You actually join us on the long awaited Normandy tour. Currently, you can see us riding down. Uh, we were at Bracknell. That's where we pulled out of when uh, I actually uh, started this video. Um, didn't record the first thing in the morning. One, I was half asleep. <laughs> and two, uh, it was a little bit early. So um, I decided that I would start recording a little bit further on down the road. Uh, we stopped at Bracknell. <clears throat> We had a cup of coffee and a little bit of breakfast uh, before making our way down to the services just down by Dover. Can't remember the for the life of me the name of the services. <laughs> As you can see my brother there. Watch him have a little jig now. Yeah, we stopped at these services to meet up with Gary. Uh, Gary lives down uh, Essex Way, so we uh, met us at the services here and now we're going to be making our way down to Dover. I put the camera on at this point as we're not too far from Folkestone. Um, the queue of lorries on the left hand side there are actually for the Channel Tunnel, believe it or not. It was it just amazed me, I have to be honest, to see how many lorries were just parked up there and apparently they've been there for a couple of days and it's just nothing moving. As you all know we went down on the Thursday which was the start of the Jubilee Bank holiday. This queue was absolutely unbelievable. This went on for miles and miles and miles. They've literally shut down the left-hand carriageway, which was originally the carriageway leading down to Dover and Folkestone. And they've just closed it down for lorries to park up on there. And that's why, as you can see on the right side now, they've split the carriageway that used to be coming out from Dover into four lanes. So you've got the two lanes going in, two lanes coming out. As you can see, I was I was just amazed. This is why I kept looking at it. Um, it's just a queue after queue after queue, and it's um, very daunting. And I felt really sorry for him. I gotta be honest. Here, you can actually see the queue for Dover itself. But about five miles from Dover at this stage. Uh, I don't know whether you can actually see the coastline just in front there. But we're not too far away from, uh, from Dover. Uh, we're just dropping down the main bit of hill. And you can see the queue of lorries all the way down. Now this goes all the way down to the main roundabout just as you get into Dover. They're stopping all the lorries from going actually into the port. There are so many in the port waiting to actually 
get on a boat. It's uh, it's rather crazy to be honest. I never I've never seen such a queue of lorries in you know two different places. One for the for the train, and then this one for the actual port itself. You can see the coastline just above my screen there on the bike. That's how close we are to Dover. Uh, as I said, we're about five mile away. But this is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, goodness knows how long they were queuing there for. But uh, I, f I feel really sorry for them. Uh, you know, they haven't moved probably for a day or so. And they're just waiting there, waiting to get on the boat. As you can see now, we are just coming into Dover now, and that was the end of the queue with the policeman there on the left, on the sorry, on the right hand side there, stopping everything coming in, and he gets a message then that when he can send more through. As you can see, there's uh, that one parked awkwardly on the left hand side of the roundabout there, but uh, just as you can see there on the right now, there's Dover Port, and we are getting ready to get on the boat. As you just saw, we pulled up onto the dockside. Didn't have long to wait. I think we were there for about 45, 50 minutes before we started the board. And as you can see here now that we're all uh, all getting on board, uh, but they split us up. Uh, they sent half of us to the left and half of us to the right. As you'll see in a second, they will stop my brother. He's in front of me there. There we go, look. And they're sending him down to the right side of the boat because we've got to park right up in the top corners and then we've got to strap the bikes down as you'll see in a little while they're just telling Dave there now where, where to park don't know what I was doing with my hand there something to do with the helmet I expect but yeah we had to go all the way down the bottom end of the boat and uh, pull up on the right hand side there and this is where we pull up and I got a squeeze between a car and the side. Not too bad for Dave, isn't? His isn't as wide as mine. I see how wide this is now compared to that to David's. I literally had to stop to make sure I didn't hit the gentleman's wing mirror on his car, and I pull up behind Dave. As you'll see now, and tell me to keep coming forward, keep coming forward, keep coming forward. You can see the straps on the right hand side there. we go and this is where we uh, strap the bikes down ready for the journey
So, all the bikes are strapped down, and we're up on the decks. And we even had someone that didn't pay for their ticket, look. He didn't phase whatsoever when I got close to him with the camera. Didn't move. We had a cracking crossing, it was lovely and smooth. As you can see, the day was still gorgeous. The sun was shining, and we thoroughly enjoyed the trip across. Nice relaxing time. Had a sandwich, a cup of coffee. And uh, yeah, just uh, wait until we get towards Dover. As you can see, he's not phased whatsoever with the camera. Not camera shy whatsoever. There we go. Just coming into Calais now. At this point, we're about 15 minutes from docking. Just a little straight that goes up into Calais Port. And then we're ready to head out. this point that we realized the other boys hadn't come off the boat yet so we had to try and find somewhere to pull over and wait for him and we did have a little bit of a wait and when we get to the bottom here there is a little pull in just by the old passport office so what we tend to do is uh, I'm talking to Dave as we're going along because we got it uh, got communications through the headsets so when we pull up towards this as you can see Dave's going over to the left now and we uh, we pull up over there, and we wait for the other boys to arrive. Left, Dave. At this point, the rest of the boys came into sight, and away we went. Heading for a hotel, which was about a four and a half hour run down. I think it took us about six or seven hours altogether with the stops that we made. It was rather warm, so we had quite a few stops for refreshments and a bit of food. And we just made our way down.
this point we're about two hours into the journey and the roads over there are absolutely fantastic smooth and some of the scenery as you can see uh, you, you've got some beautiful countryside out there and the way the bridges are built and some of them are so high up really really good and it was nice that we were all riding in sequence as well and i do believe we are now approaching our first might not be the first but we're approaching uh Problem with toll booths over there, <laughs> and you're on a motorbike. You pay by credit card, debit card, whatever else. So you've got to stop the bike, take your gloves off, put the card in, take the card back out again. You haven't got to put your pin number or anything in, and then put the card away again. So what I did is I just kept it in my inside pocket, didn't keep it in my wallet. So it was a little bit quicker to do it this way. As you can see, Dave's having a bit of trouble with his. Um, but we get that eventually and we go through about four or five leaves all the way down. Whenever we stopped at a payage, what we do is after every payage, you got one of these uh, pull-ins. So every time we go through a payage, we pull in here, have five minutes, wait for everyone to go through the payage, and then we uh, we uh, carry on then.
Hey guys. Oh, not long got up. It was a long day yesterday. It was a very, very long day yesterday. It is now Friday. Uh, it's the second, no, third of June. And we are in, I think you pronounce it Kain, C A E N, in France. Um, what a day yesterday. It was a day of, well, it was an eventful day, put it that way. <laughs> it was a long, long ride down. Uh, obviously, we had the ride from Wales down to uh, down the car, down to Dover, boat across to Calais, and then from Calais down to here, which was about all in all. Uh, well, we got back here. We got here about half past seven last night. Uh, obviously, we did lots of stops on the way down, um, but it was about four and a half hours running time. And uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, a couple of the boys dropped their bikes. Um, mine wouldn't start for some reason. Um, it was uh, uh, found out it was actually my key fob. Uh, luckily, I brought my spare set with me because the immobilizer had kicked in and it wouldn't restart. Um, it's all full, full of power, all the power on it. Uh, it just didn't want to turn over. Um, so uh, after a bit of uh, messing about with it and checking different things to make sure everything's all right with it, they said if you've got a spare key fob. And uh, tried it, tried locking it, unlocking it with the other fob, and it started straight away. So it's obviously the immobilizer. So, so it is now, uh, well, it's eight o'clock at home, nine o'clock um, local time. So it's, uh, it's time for breakfast, and then we are going over to Utah today. We're going to the furthest point on the first day, so we're going over to Utah Beach and all the areas around that way. And, uh, yeah, let's see what sort of footage I can get for you. I'm going to take my drone with me. Fingers crossed I'm going to get some nice footage on the drone. And uh, we'll go from there. So let's get going, is it? Let's go and have some breakfast first, though. <laughs> see you in a bit. <laughs> 